Hi, and welcome back to Cut the Craggle. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the second in my wave of custom Lego sets based on the movie Ghostbusters Afterlife. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be showcasing four new custom sets in total in the run-up to the film's DVD and Blu-ray release at the end of the month. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my video on my first set in this series, like last time, there will be spoilers ahead, so if you haven't watched a new movie yet, you might want to run away now. But if you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Now, let's jump right into it, and the second in this series is... Rust City Proton Training. This set is based on the scene where Podcast takes Phoebe to an old abandoned metal refinery so they can test out her grandfather's freshly repaired proton pack. Phoebe takes aim at a line of discarded bottles and cans, but it isn't long before they're disturbed by a gluttonous ghost with a hunger for metal. Rust City is what Podcast nicknames the decay in Somerville Foundry, but it was also the shooting title for the film itself. Build-wise, this set has two small assemblies. The first is Podcast Polecart, used to transport the heavy proton pack and ghost trap when they're not in use. The ghost trap is the same tried and tested build we've seen before in official LEGO Ghostbusters sets, but I created a brand new printed tile with more detail and signs of wear and tear. This design was inspired by the one I got recently from Firestar Toys. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my video on their custom LEGO Ghostbusters pieces. They even have a painting of Vigo the Carpathian. The second build in this set is the target practice that Podcast has put together, lining up old bottles and cans on a pile of scrap metal and rusty train wheels. I wanted to include a play feature in this set, so the shelf with the bottles and cans on is only attached to the rest of the build by a couple of jumper plates on either side, and underneath is a tiled off lever. If you push down on the other side, the lever shoots up and sends the bottles and cans flying in the air, just as if they've been hit by a proton stream. This set comes with two minifigures and one ghost fig. Phoebe uses the same head and hair piece from my Egon Secret Lab set, but she has a brand new torso with printed arms, as well as printed hips and legs with side printing too. Honestly, she might be my favourite in this series yet. I'm just really happy with how she turned out, and I actually think this design captures Phoebe's character better than my first custom minifig. On her back, she's wearing her grandfather's proton pack, which is the exact same build from the Secret Lab set. I did go back and forth on whether to have the straps of the pack printed on her torso, as they are with the OG Ghostbusters minifigures, but I eventually decided to leave them off, as I wanted to be able to use this torso in other situations. Next up, we have Phoebe's friend and classmate, Podcast. Like Phoebe, he has printing all over his torso, arms and legs, and he is absolutely decked out with accessories. He's holding a little road mic assembly using the basic pistol with the candle piece on the end. He's got an olive green canvas bag for his audio recorder, a pair of headphones around his neck, and of course, he's also wearing ecto goggles. I imagine this working similar to the hairpiece used on the Series 16 spy minifigure, with connection points on the sides to attach the tactical goggles piece, and just enough clearance so they have the room to be flipped up 45 degrees. As well as this very happy and enthusiastic face print, Podcast also has a second expression with a much more serious look. Then we have the first ghost our heroes encounter, the Class 5 free-floating Metal Muncher. For this character, I created two new moulds for his torso and head. His head can be rotated around, and whilst his bottom forearms are fixed in place to his bulbous belly, his top two do have articulation. All six arms have hands capable of gripping bar pieces and other minifig accessories. I'm very, very pleased with how this figure turned out. It was my first time creating anything like this myself, and I think he turned out pretty good. 
I imagine this set being around the 12 to 14.99 price range. I think that would be a fair price for the number of pieces included and the size of the builds as well as including three unique and exclusive minifigures. Let me know what you think of my custom LEGO Ghostbusters Afterlife Rust City Proton Training set in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more custom Ghostbusters Afterlife videos and I'll see you next time. Laters!